Hi, everyone. Welcome to another short attention span webinar. Today, Kelly, we're going to talk about managing for prospecting. How's that? I am very excited about this one. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like what you and I do, right? We're prospect managers. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and what's the problem? The problem with this, I think, is that um, managers will look at volume. You know, everything a sales rep does is measurable. How many letters do you send out? How many uh, samples do you drop off? How many calls did you make? How much quote volume do you have in? And of course, how much sales volume have you got up on the board? And it's not always, as we've said in the past, an accurate measurement of whether the rep is doing the job or not. But that's what we've got. So if the, if the sales rep has a $100,000 a month quota or plan and they're hitting that, then OK, you know what, We're gonna, we, can, we can say, um, yes, they're doing their job. If 10,000 of that is for prospecting new business and they've done 10,000, great. Then the, the manager is going to look at that and say, check, yep, they're doing the job. Short of that, they're going to use their eyes. And the problem with that is many. Because what happens, my experience anyway, in my opinion, is that the managers will get sidetracked and they'll jump in and say, well, what's that rep doing now? And if they don't see the sales rep in the office, they'll wonder, where are they? How do I know what they're doing? Because I can't see them. And so, you know, we've said this. We, we have, you have to make certain that your manager knows everything that you are doing and, and how much and how often and, how, and uh, how many. And anything you can quantify, you've got to let them know. Because there's big problems and challenges when it comes to managing for prospecting. So let's help the managers out there to understand how to make this better. Kelly, what do we have on our mind today? Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of shocking to me how many organizations don't use any kind of a contact management system. They're not using Salesforce or Goldmine or ACT or any of those. So there really is, as you said, absent the, the volume, the managers really don't know what, what the people are doing. And so this, I think, is important for the managers to hear. But I think it's also important for you as salespeople um, to understand kind of the other side of things, what the managers or even owners are, are thinking. So without question, the first thing would be a goal, a, a solid goal in mind for the number of new business appointments you're going to make every week. Because you know we have to balance account management, taking care of the existing business, doing quotes, going to visit customers with actually you know, legitimately getting out there to meet new customers and develop new business. And that's just to stay, you know, to stay on par with what we did last year. Because we're going to, you know, 15% of our business is going to drop off every year just through no fault of our own, just through attrition and you know, contraction in the industry. So we have to be committed and focused on seeing a number of new prospects every week. I don't know if that for you is one or 10, but there needs to be an agreed upon number. And, every, and somebody's got to hold that rep accountable for that. Because there's nothing worse than saying, hey, Joe, you got to see 10 new appointments every week, and having Joe consistently get two, and there's no consequences. There's no, no one to answer to. There's no one asking, Joe, I see that you're only getting two every week when we agreed upon 10. Do we need to change that? What's happening? You know, Bill, do you have anything to add to that? Accountability makes it happen. Kelly, we talk about this all the time with our kids, and it's no different with salespeople. Right. You know, make make that set that expectation, hold them to that expectation. There doesn't have to be dire consequences if it doesn't happen or repercussions, but there's it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen if if this doesn't ha if this doesn't exist. It's not not to the extent that you want it to. And number three, I love, and I I was a sales manager for a lot of years, and we used to do. Um, you know, weekly phone contests where it was like two hours every whatever Thursday, and whoever set, scheduled the most number of appointments won a prize. And monthly, you know, blitzes. I've got a team right now that's doing this. There's two people that work really well together, and they regularly go out and hit the streets together, and have gotten tremendous results from working together and helping each other um, develop new business. It's been really, really positive. I can't, I can't stress this enough. And I'm, I want to just, and this is downtown Chicago, folks. So I don't want to have anybody hiding behind security issues, the modern day problems of building access. 
if these guys are having success prospecting in downtown Chicago on foot, I think anybody can. Okay. Um, this next one, too, I think is, is really fantastic. If you're having a regular meeting, it's a great idea to brainstorm together and talk about a new prospect, why it's a good prospect, um, what kind of activity you've put behind it, and what is the path to turning them into a customer. Great idea to make that a team effort so that, because many heads are better than one, right? If you've got four people working on it and giving ideas, there's a better chance that some good idea is going to come out of it. Another shocking thing is that you're not having regular sales meetings, and this baffles me. Um, I just I can't understand how companies are not having at least monthly sales meetings, if not weekly. So, um, Bill, you have anything anything to add there? You know, it's kind of like that newsletter. This was kind of to mind, right? Everyone says we're going to have a newsletter. You do one newsletter, and you never do another one. Mm -hmm. And managers are famous for saying we're going to meet every Friday at four o'clock. And they do it once, maybe twice, and then it drops off for whatever reason. Regular. You heard Kelly say regular. It's got to be consistent. Because here's what happens in those, in those meetings. Let's, let's, let's say it was a standing meeting at Monday morning at 8 o'clock. And you say to the sales rep, bring your calendar. I want to see where you were last week. I want to see where you're going this week. There's nowhere to hide. Right. There's nowhere to hide. Now, the, the sales rep can certainly fudge some, some, uh, some appointments, but it's not, not going to last for long, especially if the manager is, is uh, sharp and on the ball. So that forces the, the rep to get the appointment. There's your accountability, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And it forces them to be ready for those, appoint, for those uh, appointments with their boss, knowing that, the, uh, that all eyes are on prospecting. Now, you know, one thing we did not mention here is to compensate as well. Just remember, we salespeople follow the wallet. We do where we go where the money goes. So make certain that part of your management is to compensate properly. And, then finally, and, and compensation six. should really focus on reward. I mean, this should be about rewarding good behavior, you know, not and if somebody's missing the meeting every week because they say they've got an appointment. And you know what? Look, I think a lot of people, you earn it if you're 125% of quota. But I don't think there's a lot of salespeople out there that are 125% of quota right now. So... And don't even get me started on the fact that you don't even know what your quota is. Because <laughs> if you don't have a goal, you need to have a goal that you know where you need to be and how to get there. Um, and definitely, I, I like the one-on-one -on -one time. I, like, I, I do um, weekly calls with all of my clients to check in and spend time with them at least a half an hour every week to say, tell me what's going on. What's on your mind? What's been happening? What do you need? And so it, it really gives them an opportunity to say, this is what's working, this is what isn't. You can give, as the manager, some suggestions, some ideas, um, some things to try, focusing on hot markets. Where should they be calling on right now? And if you can't answer that for them, I would definitely be looking to you know, other people within the industry, maybe have a, a company-wide meeting to say, where do you think the good customers would be coming from right now? Make it, you know, make it a team effort. And really... The bottom line is, and this is so, so important, especially with newer, younger sales reps, is we do have to manage the activity, not the outcome. And what that means is a new rep, especially, cannot only be judged on their numbers because it's going to take them time. If they're doing the right things, it's going to take, you know, even doing all the right things, it's going to take time. So if the activity is there and you have a high degree of confidence in their abilities, then the numbers will come if everything else, you know, falls into place. So we've got to give them credit for meeting their goals with regard to their activities and, and everything else that they're doing. All right. Well, listen, there's an earful out there for the managers. I hope that helps with your prospecting efforts. Kelly, thank you. Great job. Thanks, Bill. There we go. And we will talk to you again <laughs> on the next Short Attention Span webinar.